Let's talk about the new meta in patch 14.7 with the comps that you want to play and I'm going to spam to try to reach challenger at the beginning of the set. So as usual, I'm going to show you the cheat sheet I made on Tactor. You will have the links of the description and you have access to all the comps I'm going to talk about today. So in this cheat sheet, I actually have six comps. I have one comp that is more like a bonus and kind of a gamble prediction of a comp that might be actually really strong, but not sure 100% that this comp is going to be strong. So anyway, let's start first with the real comps that are going to be extremely strong in this meta. The first comp, I think everyone guessed it, is Trickshot Kesa. Uh, this comp was already strong at the end of patch 14.6 and Kesa received the buff. So there's absolutely no reason why this comp doesn't become S plus tier uh, at the beginning of the patch. I do expect many people to force it. So be careful um, because if you are overly contested, then you will most likely never find Kesa. So the way you want to play is simply for Trickshot, for Breezer, and then after you put three in Shadow um, and with Udyr at the very late game. And obviously you have a three story river that's integrated because you have Galio, Riven and uh, Sivir. The way I really like to play and the way it worked the best for me, um, it was to play with Timo Carry for the early mid game. So you actually prioritize stuff for Timo, like I'm showing here. And since this unit is so good, it allows you to fast level 8 extremely easily and you don't lose HP, you have a lot of gold, so you will be at an advantage when you're looking for Kesa. and even if you don't fight Kesa too, because you are contested, it's fine, you're still going to be top 4, top 5, simply because you have saved a lot of HP thanks to Timo. So this is the best way I found and this is the best the way that I had the most success with, that's why I'm sharing this to you, because it's not really natural to think that Timo. Uh, is going to be your main carry and you're going to prioritize items for Timo and not for Kesa. So for the items for Kesa, what you really need to have is Last Whisper. This is going to significantly up the damage of Kesa. Then you want to have something very offensive, Infinity Edge, Giant Slayers. Obviously, I didn't put here, but now that the Tattoo from In Shadow are getting buffed, you have Tattoo of Fury and you have Tattoo of Bombardment that are extremely good on Kesa. Tattoo of Toxin is meh, since you already have normally Morello on uh, Timo, so you don't need another anti heal. And then after you have other option items, because since you prioritize items for Timo, you don't necessarily have the beast for Kesa. So Renan is great. Fear Shoshin is okay, not that great. Uh, red buff is okay, especially if you didn't manage to find a Morello on Timo. Uh, Gunblade, it's okay, it's more like utility and guardbreaker. Then the next comp I want to talk about is Yone Heavenly. This comp again was extremely powerful at the end of patch 14.6. Uh, he uh, received a slight nerf on Reaper, but on the other side, uh, some Heavenly units received a buff, uh, thinking about Kha'Zix and Kiana, so these two units will actually help you stabilize better during the mid game, so you will bleed a bit less uh, before you find Yone, and that's why I think this comp is still going to be powerful, maybe it will cap a bit less during the late game, but it will be easier to reach that late game, so that's why I believe this comp is much better uh, compared to previously, even with a small nerf on Reaper. The way you want to play it obviously is Yone and Kane as your main carries, you want to fit or a Reaper, you want to fit 6 Heavenly or 7 Heavenly if you can. You have also different versions. If you have Reaper Emblem, you want to splash in Aurelia. She will be able to, I mean, uh, use the Red Breath efficiently or Morello. Also, she will remove the armor of all the units and that will significantly help uh, the damage of Kane and Yone. If you have a Heavenly Emblem, you will try to reach 7 Heavenly. You can reroll Soraka as well, but I do expect Soraka to be quite contested. She's been buffed, she will be in many comps. And then if you don't have any Emblems, I assume you won't be able to finish first because you won't be able to cap your board as much as the other two boards, but you can still have a pretty consistent uh, top. So you want to play 6 Heavenly for Reaper and that's pretty much it. So the comp you want to have when you're level 7, if you don't have an emblem, is 4 Reaper with 4 Heavenly. One thing for sure is like you always want to have 4 Reaper at level 7 and then after you splash in as many Heavenly you can. If you can have 5 Heavenly because you have an emblem, it's perfect. If you cannot, then just play this, reroll at level 7 with Yone and uh, try to find Kane as well and you will stabilize your board with that. So if you look at the items for Yone, Titan, Hush, Quicksilver, all three are excellent. Uh, double Titan Hush is great. Double Titan Bloodthirster is okay as well. Um, Last Whisper is actually okay, but it depends on the meta because like in patch 14.6, um, there were a lot of fated comps and having Last Whisper was actually good because sometimes you just couldn't find uh, Aurelia. So having that Last Whisper to be able to kill that Syndra that has uh, 200 armor is actually quite nice. But if the meta changes, 
if there is no fated anymore in the meta maybe last whisper isn't relevant okay now let's talk about duelist so trista received the buff and that's pretty much it i mean kiana as well received the buff uh, we have diana who receives the buff as well but i don't think that buff really matters that much um the way you want to play it is really simple as well is six duelist volibear three tristina three that's pretty much it you want to play this comp if you have items like titan and uh, basically islands for yone but you can't play Yone because you're contested and, or you find Volibear, so you play Volibear instead. This comp is really good. I expect this comp to be even better, especially that uh, now Fated has been quite nerfed. Once you have Sage activated, you want to put Tristana in the second row so she can uh, receive some uh, more Omnivamp thanks to Sage. And uh, you reward level 7, just like Yone. Like, pretty st if you know how to play Yone, you will know how to play this comp. Uh, this is your level 7 board that you want to have with Volibear and Tristana as your IM holder. You want to have 6 duelists and you can have 2 Dragonon at this moment. You will slow roll at this moment to have Volibear 3, Tristana 3. Once you have them, if you didn't low roll, you will be able to push level 8, level 9 and find the uh, late game units like uh, Irelia, Rakan, Wukong, this kind of stuff that will help you cap your board much better. If you're looking for items for Tristana, uh, you want to have offensive items. Uh, Last Whisper is nice again, but um, this time uh, it's really mandatory in the sense that even if you don't play against Fated, uh, since you have a front to back comp, you really want to remove the armor of the frontliners so you can actually kill them. And then after you can go with Red Buff, uh, Desblade, uh, Giant Slayer, this kind of stuff, depending on the items you find first, of course. Then the next comp you want to play is Senna Ghostly. I know Ghostly has been nerfed. I know that um, this might not be as strong as it used to be, but I do expect this comp to be still powerful. There, there is a reason for that. First of all, Ink Shadow items received quite a good buff, honestly. So you can actually have a very strong Senna with a Tattoo of Fury, for instance or even Tattoo of Bombardment, but Fury is better uh, in my opinion. And um, anyway, you have a lot of 3-star units, Atrox, Shen, Senna. They didn't get nerfed. Um, what only got nerfed is the damage you get from Ghostly, but you still have the same amount of tankiness, you still have the same amount of damage, and you just have a little bit less of burst damage, I guess. But on the other hand, like I said, since the tattoos got buffed, uh, if you have a good tattoo, you can play on Senna and she's going to be the same as before. Also, Morgana received a little buff, but I don't know if it's going to make a difference. There's something I forgot to put here. I will change it after the video, but uh, you really want to have a Static and um, Morello on Morgana. The Static will help you deal more damage thanks to Ghostly and the Morello because, well, she's a good Morello applier and having anti Ali is quite good. So the way you want to play it is really simple. Probably you already know if you play this comp or if you follow the meta. If you didn't know, I'm going to go very fast. You need to play 4 Ghostly at level 6. You will stay with this comp uh, at stage 3-2. You will roll in order to find at least a 2-star uh, frontline, uh, except maybe Eloy, if you don't find her, it's fine. And a 2-star backline, you need to have Senna 2 at least. And you stabilize your board with that. And then after, you go back to 50 gold and you slow roll for Shen 3, Atrox 3, Senna 3. Once you find them, if you did a low roll, you will be able to win your fights and you will be able to uh, rush your level to play this late game board with 6 Ghostly. If you look the items for Senna, uh, Last Whisper is really nice. If you don't have Event Shroud, it's actually mandatory. If you don't have Event Shroud, uh, this allows Senna to have much more damage. And if she has much more damage, all the damage amplification from Ghostly will also increase. That's why that's why it's really important that uh, you can deal as much damage as possible. I really like to have Infinity Edge to have more crit, so she can literally one shot units. Giant Slayer is nice because it's still front to back. Uh, red buff is okay. It's actually really nice if you don't have Morello. Um, but uh, if you already have Morello and you have Tattoo of Free, Tattoo of Free is much better. Then Desblade is good because it's a lot of AD. You have Tattoo of Bombardment, which is okay. And the last one that I like the less is Tattoo of Toxin, but if you have it, you, you have to play it. Maybe there's a world where if your first Tattoo is Tattoo of Toxin, this comp isn't playable. It's possible, but this requires uh, to have more limit testing, I guess. Now I want to talk about a new comp. Uh, this is a bit of a bet but uh, I think it's a kind of a safe bet. So in this patch, we have Lux and Arcanist who received buffs, and I do expect Arcanist to rise in this patch. I might be wrong, of course, uh, this is a prediction, um, but I'm, I'm confident that there's potential with this comp. So if you wanna play this comp, this is a comp you want to play when you reroll two costs and three costs at the same time, because you want to reroll Lux, but you want to reroll your frontline, because if you don't have any frontline, your comp will just disappear. Um, you want to reroll Eloy 3 and I'm a move 3. So the way you want to play this comp with 6 Arcanists and 4 Wardens is to uh, actually stabilize first your board at level 6 
So when I say stabilize, it means that you want to have two star units and two star frontline. And then after, from this point, you have two choices. If you have a lot of health, you can push level seven and have your slow roll at level seven for Lux three, Eloy three, I mean with three. If you are kind of low health, I assume you should slow roll level 6 to have Lux 3 and then you push level 7 to find potentially Eloy 3 and Amumu 3. Um, this is something we need to learn a little bit on this set, um, depending on the situation. And this is how we will learn how to master this comp basically. As for items, I want to have Shoujin, Jewel Gauntlet, Guardbreaker and Lux, full crit because she will have a lot of AP. And I assume full crit is going to be good. If you cannot have full crit, I will show you the items a bit here. Um, it's best maybe to go with kind of safe AP items like Rabadon, Nashor's Tooth, Archangel, this kind of stuff. Um, but I, I, I do prefer to have this kind of build because she can one shot the back lane. You will have to position Lux properly so she can always one shot the back lane. On the other hand, once you find uh, your units, you will have to cap your board for the very late game and aim for first place. In that case, you want to cap your board thanks to Syndra. Uh, you can also fit very easily Fated, so Set, Syndra, and you will link Set and Syndra. That way you will have a lot of damage from two sources, and, and that's how you can actually win the very late game. Okay, now let's talk about the bonus comp I'm including in this video. I'm talking about bonus comp because I don't expect this comp to be necessarily the strongest, or at least I feel like this comp has potential, but it's kind of a flip coin. Either it's a hit or a miss. Maybe this comp is going to be trash. Maybe this comp is going to be god tier. I don't really know. It's really difficult to anticipate it. But I wanted to share with you. And maybe if you guys really like to enjoy new comps, trying some new stuff, and you don't care about the meta, uh, this comp I, th I think is for you. And the way you want to play is around Diana 3 and Soraka 3. Both units received a major buff. Uh, Diana with Double Titan and Steadfast can be unkillable during PBE times uh, before the set was released. This, this was really terrifying, but it received the nerf and the meta change and you know all the stuff. So if the meta allows it, you can play this way. You can have Kale that will give uh, AP to the back lane. And actually you have a lot of AP because you have Heavenly with Soraka that will give AP to the whole team. You have Sage that gives AP to the back lane. And then after you have Soraka with her passive that gains AP when the team loses HP. So Soraka can have a lot of AP and can literally one shot targets. All you need is to have a strong frontline with Diana that can deal damage and also stay alive quite a long time. So the way you want to play this comp is a free cost reward. So you want to reward at level 7. And if you reward at level 7, you want to reward with this kind of comp. You will want to reward with Diana and Soraka, and then you want to include Story River to have a bit more frontline and utility, especially if you add Sage that, like I said, gives AP on the back lane and gives a sustain on the front line for Diana. And, and that's pretty much it. This is something I might try or might not try, but I, this is something I do expect to come, or at least people try it. And we will see in the future if uh, this is going to be trash or godlike. But I don't think there's a middle ground, <laughs> to be honest. Okay, guys, if you're interested in grinding TFT in this set and you really want to try to achieve master, I can help you with that because I have a weekly meta analysis. I'm making updates every Friday, so that way you have the time to spam the game on the weekend. And I share it on my private Discord. This was uh, the meta analysis of the last week for patch 14.6. As you can see, I put multiple comps, I put uh, different stuff, and also I put more information about augments and a lot of stuff. So if you really want to grind the, the game and try to reach master, you can have access to this uh, private, let's say, meta analysis in my private Discord. And for that, you simply need to join YouTube as a member. And I'll put the link in the description. That way you can help me uh, funding this channel and grow this channel. But also you get something back. Until next video, see you at the top of the ladder.